Oh, hey! I'm glad at least you are here. My friends told me they would accompany me to this strange museum, but they bailed on me. It's so weird that everything in this museum looks similar. I mean, if you look at the photo frames, the kilt of the statue, the table, the king's crown, and even pieces of the puzzle all look similar. It's a shape I know, but I just can't remember right now. Some sort of quadrilateral, I reckon. Oh no, fire! Which way was it? How do I go out? I'm trapped in this museum. Wait a minute. Trap. Museum. Trap. Museum. I know the shape. It's trapezium. It's trapezium. It's trapezium. It's trapezium. <sighs> that was a close shape. <laughs> so what are we studying today? Yes, trapeziums. So clearly, trapeziums are quadrilaterals. But they aren't parallelograms. You remember, right? Yes. The difference lies in the fact that in a parallelogram, both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. But in trapeziums, only one pair of opposite sides is parallel. So, this is a trapezium, this is a trapezium, and even this is a trapezium. Now, if you notice, you can see that here the two non-parallel sides are equal. So, this one is called an isosceles trapezium. Interestingly, in an isosceles trapezium, these two angles are also equal. Now that we have recorded what a trapezium is, let us understand how to find its area and perimeter. Say, this is a trapezium of which we need to find the area and perimeter. So let's name it A, B, C, D. Now if we scrutinize, we can see that this trapezium, when broken here, forms a rectangle and a triangle. So let's name this point E. Now, the area of this trapezium is basically the sum of the areas of rectangle A, B, E, D and right triangle D, E, C. Let us assign some variables to the different sides. Say, the distance between the two parallel sides of this trapezium is H. Now, this can also serve as the height of the right triangle D, E, C because clearly A, B is equal to D, E. Now, Let's take the length of this rectangle as A, the base of the triangle as B, and the longer side among the parallel sides of the trapezium as C. So, area of the rectangle ABED is equal to BE into BA, that is A into H. And area of right triangle DEC is equal to half into EC into ED, that is half into B into H. Now, the area of this trapezium A, B, C, D is equal to A into H plus half B into H. Now, we want to take half H common over here, but in order to do that, we first have to write A into H as 2 A into H by 2. So now, taking half H common, we have area of trapezium is equal to half H into 2 A plus B. Now, this can also be written as half H into A plus A plus B. Now, we know that A plus B is nothing but C. So, area of trapezium is equal to half H into A plus C. Here, H is the distance between the two parallel sides A and C. So, basically, the area of a trapezium is half the product of the sum of parallel sides and the distance between them. Wasn't that simple? <laughs> Let's try it again with a different trapezium, say this one. So clearly, this trapezium, when broken along these two lines, forms this right triangle, this rectangle, and then this right triangle. So the area of the entire trapezium is basically the sum of all of these shapes. So for this right triangle, area is equal to half into x into h. For the rectangle, area is equal to A into H and then for that triangle, the area is equal to half into Y into H. So, adding all of them up, we get the area of this trapezium as half into X into H plus A into H plus half into Y into H. Now here also, we want to take half H common. So, in order to do that, we first write A into H as 2 into A into H by 2. So now, taking half H common, we have area of trapezium is equal to half H into X 
plus 2a plus y, which can also be written as half h into x plus y plus a plus a. And what is x plus y plus a? The diagram tells us that it is c. So area of trapezium is equal to half h into a plus c. Here again, h is the distance between the two parallel sides a and c. So now let's find the perimeter. Like any other shape, perimeter is just the length of the boundary. So if we take the non-parallel sides as m and n, then the perimeter of trapezium is equal to a plus m plus c plus n. Now that we know the formula, let's tackle a question. Say it this one. So for questions like these, all you have to do is assign the values to the correct variables and then substitute them in the formula. So here, if we draw a trapezium with the given values, we can see that area of trapezium is given as 175 square meters. A is equal to 20 meters, H is equal to 10 meters and C is unknown. So now, substituting the values in this formula, we have 175 square meters is equal to half into 10 meters into 20 meters plus C. On simplifying this, we get 175 square meters by 5 meters is equal to 20 meters plus C or 35 meters is equal to 20 meters plus C. Then C is equal to 35 meters minus 20 meters, which gives us 15 meters. So here the answer is 15 meters. Now, if we had to find the perimeter of this trapezium, we would just have to know the values of the non-parallel sides M and N, and then adding all of them up, we would get the value of the perimeter. If you like that question, you're gonna absolutely love the problems we created for you in the mock test. So what are you waiting for? Let's quickly summarize and off you can go to practice. So in this video, we discussed the areas and perimeters of trapeziums. We saw that Trapeziums are quadrilaterals with exactly one pair of opposite sides parallel. A trapezium with its non-parallel sides equal is called an isosceles trapezium. The area of a trapezium is equal to half h into a plus c. Here, h is the height of the trapezium or the distance between the parallel sides a and c. If the non-parallel sides of a trapezium are m and n, then the perimeter of the trapezium is equal to a plus m plus c plus n. 